Uh, for, secondly, the Arctic is a great source of natural resources and a place to build uh, to build new sea routes and to build uh, governmental governmental projects on. Moreover, taking into the account the speeds of developing the Arctic, which are very high, and with a large scale of expected impact on the ecosystem of the region. Thirdly, it is considered to be that the problems of solving the eco problems, it's not bad. This indeed, instead, this is a key to ensure the sustainable development. Thus, all the uh, large scale uh, projects that are being implemented in the Russian Federation, they should be considered, they should consider ecosystems, especially taking into account the ways of minimizing the impact on the Arctic and Northern ecosystem, thus ensuring the sustainable development of the Arctic. And this is the context that we will be discussing during our panel session. Today, we, today we will have participants from educational organizations, from governmental organizations, and that there will be foreign speakers as well. And there will be a participant from uh, State Assembly Iltamen. I'd like to highlight that the time that we will have for our panel discussion is very short. We will have only two hours and we will have, uh, we'll, in the end, we will have to approve a resolution. So discussion of the presentations we will hold in the end of our discussion. You will, each of you, you will have a limited time and you may ask only one or two questions. So I would like to give the floor to Vladimir Prokopiev uh, from the Ministry, from the Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources of the Sahara Republic. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, dear Grigory Nikolaevich, dear participants. Uh, let me once again greet all of you at such an important event. My topic is uh, roles of uh, law management in minimizing the anthropogenic influence on the Arctic and Northern nature. Unfortunately, the ecological balance needs complex approach. All the measures should be taken by all the countries whose which territory is considered to be the Arctic. In Russian Federation, we have a big territory of strategically important and vulnerable Arctic territories. that are very vulnerable to the anthropogenic impact. And that's why we need to uh, ensure the environmental safety on the governmental level. The Russian Federation is one of the leaders in uh, exploitation of the hydrogen. More than 90% of uh, gas and oil They come from the Arctic region. And over the last years, the oil exploitation will be uh, growing. And the ecological risks will be also increasing. That is why we will need to ensure a special uh, natural resource management on these territories. And we will need to uh, specify the objectives and the tasks to conduct the governmental Arctic policy 
in terms of ensuring the ecological safety. Taking all that into consideration uh, and everything that was said by the State Assembly of Iltimen, uh, we sent a request to the government of uh, Russia to find a possible ecological doctrine of the Russian of the Arctic territory in the Russian Federation. Uh, we think that to preserve the ecology of the Arctic, we need to find common ideas. And thus, we think we should work on creating an Arctic international memorandum to share it with the whole Arctic. We need to understand that any anthropogenic impact on the permafrost should be controlled strictly. And the issue of preserving the permafrost should be a problem not only of scientists, but of the government as well. The issues of preserving the e ecology of the Arctic uh, started being topical from 2014. In general, according to the Tuyakut ecology doctrine of the Sahara Republic, uh, passed by the State Assembly, one of the objectives to improve the legislative basis of uh, eco safety is uh, managing is managing and uh, controlling the area of the permafrost because almost all Sahara Republic is located on the permafrost. In May 2018, we passed a law on uh, preserving the permafrost. The structure of this uh, law is quite simple. I will not be talking about it much because among us, we have an author of this uh, project, Aysen Fyodorov, and I hope he will talk about it uh, more. And we suggest, we suggest to create a unified system of information on permafrost based on the monitoring and its uh, permafrost predictions. As a result of this law, we will need to define uh, unsustainable, unsustainable areas with degrading permafrost, and we will have to uh, take into account it when planning and developing the uh, governmental plans. Uh, despite the fact that uh, the permafrost takes 65% uh, of Russia, in, in our country, we don't have a system of preserving it. And to solve this issue, one law is not enough. We need more strict governmental policy. So solving this problem should be ruled by another law or by uh, providing changes into federal laws. The Parliament of Yakutia, with the participation of scientific members from the Institute of Permafrost, uh, we created a project on uh, rational usage and uh, preserving of the permafrost uh, that will define the law, the future law on the permafrost. The main principles of the of governmental management should be uh, governmental monitoring and taking into account all the factors connected with uh, permafrost degrading. And we need we need to avoid negative consequences of uh, permafrost degradation. In September this year, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Ecology, Mr. Kozlov, highlighted that we need to establish basic federal law. And secondly, a separate block is a question on 
creating more strict punishments while conducting works in the Arctic with uh, the help of technological uh, tools. First of all, while exploiting natural resources, we need to we need to make our requirements more strict by the uh, legislative law. And these questions and issues will be uh, brought during our meetings in the state assembly, especially uh, when punishing those who break the law including uh, the industrial companies. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, does anyone have any questions? If you have suggestions to the resolution, they, you may uh, voice them in the end of our session. Thank you very much. Now I'd like to give the floor to Dadokhov Vasily, uh, Deputy Minister of Ecology and Natural Resources. Good afternoon, uh, dear colleagues, participants of this uh, session of this uh, Northern Forum about the um, development of the Arctic regions, sustainable development of Arctic regions. You know that now uh, we uh, uh, witness the um, development of the oil and gas production companies and um, and uh, we are working on the um, um, Cleaning the cleaning the Arctic regions uh, uh, related to the metal uh, that is uh, um, that is uh, uh, was left uh, back in the use back in the USSR and um, and we also have the uh, specially uh, protected uh, territories and I'm talking I'm going to talk about them so the um, this is the guarantee of uh, the uh, resurrection of the uh, nature, and uh, that actually minimizes the um, uh, the management of resources management uh, on the territory. And the characteristics of the uh, territories of the territories a flexible system of the traditional uh, management uh, natural resources management uh, system and. Uh, and we have the resource uh, reserves and uh, we have the zones of the uh, traditional natural resources management and uh, we um, we uh, we make this assured to have uh, the to have the traditional um, indigenous peoples to lead their way of life and um, the republic is um, is working on the expansion of uh, five uh, territories, uh, protected territories, and um, uh, it uh, they comprise to up to one million uh, some, uh, square kilometers. It's thirty-seven, approximately thirty-seven percent of our republic, and uh, this is like um, unprecedented. Uh, uh, territories uh, uh, that are protected on one um, subject. So this year in Bolunsky region, we have, uh, we uh, organized uh, uh, a resource uh, reserve, uh, which is called uh, Alrosa and um, Chikanovsky, and uh, it is uh, to protect the wild reindeer, and uh, and we are trying to do this. Uh, so we have this task from the uh, two years time, and this is the, the issue of uh, preserving the population of the wild reindeer uh, on the territory of uh, the Krasnoyarsky Krai, and as well as on the Republic of Sahaya Kutia is uh, quite uh, urgent. And we, uh, 
and of course we will still um, be using the meat of the reindeer and uh, other products uh, but uh, by products but uh, uh, in the laws and the rules so we have uh, made some changes and uh, like for example we would uh, allow hunting till the 15th of of March, but uh, now we uh, allow uh, hunting only on uh, up till the 31st of January. And uh, so the functioning of this resource uh, res uh, reserve is uh, will uh, will help to preserve the um, the different places that are re uh, relocated for uh, different functioning of the reindeer herders uh, herd. herd. Um, and this will actually lead to the preserving the other um, objects of the flora and fauna. And uh, the uh, nowadays the reindeer uh, hunt, uh, reindeer exploitation is is uh, is one of the highest. And uh, uh, there are only forty four thousand um, individuals. And uh, the And uh, the government uh, leads its work to expand uh, the uh, uh, the words of the uh, protected protected areas. And uh, in 2020, uh, it was uh, developed a special scheme uh, that uh, that will uh, that will have uh, develop uh, that will develop until 2050. 30 and 50, and uh, we will um, organize different other uh, parks and reserves in Amga, in Momsky region, and in the framework of the National Program of Ecology um, uh, during 2017 and uh, up to 2019, we, uh, we organized uh, three uh, protected areas. Um, uh, this one of them is uh, Bear Island, uh, the second is um, uh, Kutaluk, and uh, the third one is on the Novosibirsky Islands. And also we are expecting to finish organizing the one uh, protected area that is of federal value. It's a state, uh, uh, it is a, uh, it's on the Laptev Sea and uh, next to the Laptev Sea and uh, and also, we are working on uh, working on uh, preserve uh, in Niren Grinsky region and in Momsky. So, uh, from the moment we uh, uh, started, it's been like 25 years of having this kind of territories, and uh, we have uh, accumulated a great experience of working. And uh, our republic is one of the leading. Um, uh, leading in the preserving the nature, and we have uh, human resources that of uh, highly uh, professional human resources, and uh, that's why Repub we can say that the Republic uh, is uh, um, is uh, doing its work uh, in preserving this uh, this uh, territories for the uh, use of future uh, future generations and. Uh, uh, there are um, many uh, local people working on these territories uh, and uh, uh, indigenous people or peoples are resigning on the traditional on their traditional uh, territories and uh, so this is what I wanted to say thank you very much if you have any questions please thank you so if you have questions please So no questions, thank you. So we give the floor Alexander uh, Fyodorov, uh, the vice director of the uh, Institute of um, Melnikov Institute. Uh, he's a uh, doctor of science, uh, the implants of the um, Good afternoon. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to talk here today in front of you. Uh, 
I work at the Permafrost Institute. And those who work on ecology and environmental protection, we all know each other. And uh, on this slide, you see only my name, but of course I was doing this presentation not alone. We were doing it with the staff of the whole Permafrost Institute. And I would like to begin with the problem of global warming. Here on the slide, you see the world map where the latest, where over the latest 70 years, the air temperature was changing. You see that the territory of Yakutia is almost in the top of the most uh, risky and the hottest uh, areas. Of course, this would be polar and Arctic areas. And that's why the numbers you can see, uh, the numbers here are 2.5, 3.8 degrees Celsius. That would be the number of increased temperature in our Republic. Our scientists estimated that at average over over the 50 years, the annual temperature in Yakutia has increased by two and three degrees. However, it doesn't it doesn't show the annual uh, increase. For example, last year in Suntar, the average annual temperature reached minus 2.5 degrees. This is a nonsense. It's in the area of the permafrost with such low, with such temperature. You might have read the books by one author who said that the permafrost begins with the average temperature of minus seven. In Suntar, we had minus 2.5. Last year in Nikusk, we had minus six when the uh, standard number would be minus 10. So these are the changes that are taking place here. And I would like to add uh, this table. Uh, here you can see the temperature, the climate changes for the latest uh, 12,000 years, how the temperature was changing, how it was uh, first cold and then warm again, and then cold and then warm again, with yellow light, with yellow color highlighted, you see the uh, lines of the periods when it, it was, the temperature was getting warmer. However, we can't say that uh, this uh, warming is happening only now. Of course, the, here we have the anthropogenic impact on climate. Climate every 1000 year was changing. It was cold and then warm. And look at how it was 10 or eight years ago, thousand years ago, this, uh, this warming brought um, landscapes like Alas. Our Alases are the true formation connected to permafrost degradation. And of course, we should be aware of it because the nature existed before us. It had such uh, hazardous changes. Uh, many scientists uh, predict that it will be getting warmer. Here, I you can see a, uh, a, a research from the University of Alaska 
uh, in the first picture you see how the permafrost will be changed by 2050 and this pink uh, color it shows the permafrost degradation in the higher in the higher level of the permafrost and by 2100 you see how all these changes will be here in Yakutsk. Such predictions are made by many scientists. So what are the types of degradation? We all hear the Batagai uh, mega slump, the thermo uh, erosion in Yamal, uh, how the infrastructure uh, was uh, destroyed. But when we start uh, talking about the impact of the uh, climate warming and anthropogenic uh, disruptions, we need to have a certain basis. As in any science, we need to uh, create a map, a data, collected data, create a table. And here is a table of types of permafrost and landscapes uh, types. We have uh, created uh, this map in our institute. Uh, you can uh, get this map in free access if you follow this link. You can see it down below in PDF format. You can also find it on the website of our institute. You can find there not only the map itself, you can see the comment on this map. So why does the permafrost, why is the permafrost so dangerous and why the landscape changes, they react uh, very quickly to anthropogenic impact and climate change. First of all, it depends on the, uh, on ice, on underground ice. Here you can see that 70 or 80 percent under the ground is pure ice. And this ice, when the thawing uh, increases, starts reacting with the permafrost degradation. This is the Serdakh region, three kilometers from the town of Serdakh next to the Kichima Lake. And every year we find such places when the underground ice comes out. It happens in central Kutia and all around the Republic. So this is the map of ice content in the permafrost. Uh, the darker the color, uh, the more thick the ice is. And the darkest colors, they show the most vulnerable and the most dangerous areas. Meaning in these areas, the eco uh, status, the infrastructure are in the most dangerous condition. Secondly, the temperature, the ground temperature rises, the permafrost temperature rises. For example, you can see the model of the temperature in central Yakutia. In uh, 1970, it was at one level, and in 1980, the level increased. So you can see the punctuation at a completely different level. And this is called climate shift in English literature. And this shift is Zdvig in Russian. It plays the biggest, the biggest, it is the biggest, this shift is the biggest reason of our hazardous changes in the permafrost.
unfortunately we cannot hear the speaker anymore due to some technological issues i'm afraid we will try to solve the problem asap So the sound is back. So here in this picture, you can also see the changes. Uh, you all know when the when the uh, subsidence happens, and the scientists from our institute, Svinda Boyev, Neustroeva, and others, they have showed to us that the 72% of people who were asked, they had problems with basement subsidence over the last years, 72%. This is almost the whole infrastructure. Secondly, look here, as Vladlen Mikhailovich mentioned about the law, of course, the law is really in demand and it should work. So to avoid it, look, this is a youth youth region in Churapcha and degraded lands. We should not sell them in circles. You can see in circles, you can see that these uh, lands, they are in the very beginning of degradation. We should not sell that to uh, people. And of course, this law uh, adopted by the state assembly, they should have uh, informed the population. Maybe you have already seen this picture. This is the airfield site of Churapcha Airport. Uh, up to 1982, small planes used to land here, and ever since we don't have them anymore. So the uh, transport scheme the transport scheme, the 25 percent of transport schemes and transport roads that we have here in uh, in the Republic built on the permafrost will look like that. As for the fields, you all know the Uvarov uh, field in Sirtakh. All this land is eaten by the thermokarst. These uh, circles that you can see, this is the beginning of uh, a last type building land. Very soon on this territory, we will have a an alas. It was estimated that, for example, in Churapcha and Tata Ulusis, 50 or 40 percent of uh, fields, they they are uh, they look like disrupted lands they will never be restored again and down below you can see the statistic data from lands how much la fields we had in 1990s more than uh, 100 hectares in Ikutia, and now we have only 40,000 
uh, and it's a huge uh, reduction. Unfortunately, no one knows the results, uh, the reasons, but I think it would be the permafrost degradation. In the map below, you see the red dots. These are the regions with the same degradation. We always said that permafrost uh, degradation is connected to anthropogenic impact. Uh, but uh, the silkworm, we had silkworms. Uh, this forest used to be dead. And in these years, the thermocar started developing. This is This is from our uh, Yukichi site. And you can see how the landscape was changing over the years. These changes happen very quickly. And if we want to see how the climate warming impacts the nature, you should all come to Siberia and to Yakutia to look at these uh, landscapes. And this was our uh, work, our research field work. Uh, we were trying to estimate the speed of such processes. For example, uh, the thermocrust depression is 10 or 14 centimeters per year. So in 20 years, there would be two meters already. And in 30 years, that would be three meters. These are the speed of, uh, of permafrost degradation. If we don't preserve or don't try to preserve the permafrost, we will have such results. We recently uh, came back from Verkhoyansk region in 2001. Uh, there was a big wildfire. You know what were the, the, the area? The fact that permafrost degrades uh, and it melts, it's okay, it's clear. But this uh, unstoppable contour of degradation takes up to uh, 100 square kilometers. Such huge processes with unstoppable uh, degradation, permafrost degradation, there are not of such kind in, in the whole world. And as for the wildfires, of course, they are very dangerous. But we forget that we have very good works by Mr. Katamura. He worked with us at our institute in 2009. These uh, black stripes that you see, these are, these are the leftovers of coal our alasses that we talked about, they were created because of wildfires. If there was no hard anthropogenic uh, press, the wildfires were huge. And in these uh, alas accumulations, we can see the leftovers of coal, wooden coal. And how can we fight it? All the scientists in the world are trying to find the answer. We are also conducting some experiments. And uh, how does the, um, how does tree destroyment uh, influence us? These are the pictures from some of our field trips. 
and how does the for example in 2002 we cut almost all the uh, trees in the area of studies and the and in this area we received 400 gram co2 emission in this area it means that uh, these changes are happening they are not uh, finishing but they were more stable by 2004 or 2007 the co2 emission so we still had the co2 emission as for the subsidence the biggest uh, surface subsidence are taking place uh, from 2005 to 2008. It doesn't happen in one day. Sometimes journalists on fires, they come here and they say that you have estimated the catastrophic processes that are taking place. And we tell them, come back in seven years, and that's when you'll see the results. It is indeed like that, because all the data in 2005, 6, and 7, 8, they show that these years were the most dangerous. And how can we stop the process? Um, uh, here you can see the how the forest succession was uh, taking place. If we restore the forest, me, it means we preserve the permafrost. We conducted it uh, quite a long time ago. So the complete succession uh, will be going on for 100 years. Uh, here, I can't uh, explain it uh, very briefly. But uh, down below, to the le on the left, uh, you see the shielding layer changes. How much it changed, and and you you can see that when the ice finally froze, it stopped the. Uh, it stopped the thawing of the permafrost and the subsidies. And in over the 40 years of observing in the successions of birch and large forests, we saw that when the temperature raised in these areas the uh, temperatures were instead getting lower so the result is that we need to have these plants we need to have uh, vegetation we should not touch it because it helps so why This is the article by Lapenis. Le uh, this is the vegetation and green parts. It was increased by 30% and it helped the permafrost from degradation. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your very interesting uh, for interesting uh, presentation. And if you have questions to Alexander, please ask. So our research has shown that we don't need trees in thousands. Uh, how the succession started, you saw it, right? These small uh, birches, 
we see one birch with our eyes, but its root system and its ecosystem that it creates, all the grass, leaves, it all holds the it all holds the temperature, it keeps the permafrost temperature stable. And if we see that and if we see that there are new uh, plants growing, it means that there is a tendency for improving the situation. So, yes, indeed, the Arctic uh, zone was uh, is polluted by many pollutants and they are spread through air, water, and there are a lot of uh, research being conducted on estimating the pollution. Uh, we were supposed to have a speaker from Norway to report on this, but he unfortunately, unfortunately he will not be able to present. And now we would like to give the floor to our next speaker, but Kaimen Yuri, candidate of uh, ecological sciences. He will report on He will report on Kimberlithic zones. Everyone's uh, waiting for the presentation. So we have uh, done this uh, work uh, together with other colleagues, and um, this is um, together with the Alrosa and uh, with, together with the Northeastern Civil Federal University and Vochenkova uh, Galina uh, Petrovna, Kovalchuk, and uh, and the uh, leader was Vasilyevich. So on the basis of our um, um, Experience uh, in the western part of Yakutia, we go deeper of uh, deeper d horizons uh, when we build the um, when they build the wells, the wells, and we see uh, kimberlite. And this kimberlite, uh, uh, we um, so we lose uh, the um, crystals of um, diamond uh, of uh, fifty five millimeters uh, and it is up to 15% of the production. And uh, we extract them of, uh, by physical, physical and chemical uh, methods and, uh, and uh, they, and the mechanism of the formation of this uh, hydrophil uh, uh, they are because of the mineral uh, uh, 
mineral um, substances and uh, the more we go the, more, the deeper we go uh, and we see uh, the uh, the more changes in the kimberlite substances uh, so they of course in, hamper the uh, the production of the uh, diamonds and uh, they don't allow us to they don't allow us to um, to produce so in Kimber, the Kimberlite are uh, are um, they they contain some uh, clay and talc and uh, they comprise up to twenty six percent of uh, the whole mass and uh, uh, so so the changes of the Kimberlite uh, we see because of the substances that. Uh, that are found in them. It's uh, Na smected and uh, um, talc and uh, chloride smected. And uh, uh, on the left, we use, um, on the pictures, you see how the different um, kimberlite uh, substances. Следующий слайд, пожалуйста. So the particles of these minerals, uh, they concentrate in the national products and uh, while we uh, produce uh, kimberlites and uh, they are very active on the surface and uh, they are very uh, prone to the cation change and they um, So we we uh, made this um, research. Um, we uh, our research came to the conclusion that uh, the um, so there are a lot of hydrofilled uh, substances uh, and. Um, so uh, they, uh, you can see them on these photos and um, uh, they are mixed form and they are concentrated on the, uh, when, when the um, uh, diamond uh, production. So, So we need to study the substances and how they are uh, comprised together. And uh, we, we diagnose them and uh, the uh, different methods of separation. So we uh, studied uh, diamonds uh, of, uh, with the help of different methods of uh, of electronic micros um, micros with the x-ray uh, microanalysis and um, other methods and the analysis of the chemical substances of this polymineral uh, micro um, uh, substances so we meet us to unify this uh, uh, substances and you can see uh, the different minerals uh, that are different um, so here you see a different method of uh, production of the diamond and uh, uh, well, it's very technical and I cannot translate this. <laughs> so, um, so again about the uh, physical and chemical methods of, uh, um, of production, of diamond production. And so here you see the general uh, substances, uh, there's mineral, minerals and the formula. and. So, so they are, so th all these minerals uh, are 
presented in this uh, in this table, and uh, we will work uh, with them in future, and we will have to we will have to break down them so that uh, we'll uh, get the diamonds out of them. So at the end, um, I would like to say that um, in <laughs> the field of of um, diamond production, uh, we it uh, help. So we, uh, we it will save those fifteen percent of diamonds that we lose after the production of the diamonds, and uh, this mineral um, and this will um, make a better uh, methods of production. So um, this um, research. So these minerals um, um, is similar uh, in all the other in, in every uh, and they characterize um, all the hydrofilled uh, substances in Sahayut. So if you have any questions. So we all know uh, your um, so we all know about the tailing dumps and stuff, but um, uh, my question is about the um, uh, hazard hazardous impact on the nature, on the environment um, um, and um, uh, the main thing is about the tailing dump, and um, uh, uh, this is how we treat the water. And we have technologies uh, of using this kind of water, and it's hydrochloride, uh, and uh, how to use them in these uh, dumps. Um, and now there are quite uh, a lot of things that. Um, that uh, we are not able to um, uh, treat this tailing dump, and uh, and and uh, Alrosa has a lot of tailing dumps, and uh, and uh, because of the tailing dumps, we have this um, um, uh, this uh, situation when we can uh, uh, influence badly on the rivers around, and uh, so in whole, you know, the, so the pr production of the minerals and uh, of course it is uh, one of the, um, one of the parts of the work in our Republic. So thank you very much. Now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Afanasi with a with a presentation on nature through ecology. Uh, good afternoon. Today we are studying the impact, the anthropogenic impact on the environment and how it influences the climate. We all know that, please turn my presentation on, we'll know that it is uh, changing. We are having uh, global warming. We know that uh, world industrial uh, sphere emit, produces around 40 tons of CO2 emissions. And this is all leads to the increase of the average temperature in the world. And uh, relatively, relative compared to the previous uh, century, the average temperature increased by 1.9 degrees Celsius. 
and the scientists predict that in the nearest 20 years, this temperature will increase by 1.5 degrees more. If we continue like this, if we continue to produce uh, CO2. Uh, so we see that uh, the surface, uh, the, the surface temperature increases. What can I say? Of course, a special, a special tension. Uh, we have heard the previous speakers that the permafrost will be thawing. We will have subsidence, thermocastric, thermocastric development, and so on. But in the countries that are in the south, they will have the increase in the temperature by up to 50 degrees. Celsius and even higher. And of course, on such territories, it will be impossible to live. It will be too hot. So if uh, this uh, tendency goes on, uh, all the ice will be thawing, the Greenland especially, And we are seeing the CO2 emissions, air pollution, the atmosphere is suffering a lot, first of all. Of course, warming leads to different catastrophes. The Gulf Stream may stop and in Europe, we will have uh, different uh, temperature jumps, even winter storms or summer droughts, and even floods that we are already witnessing. In, in summer this year, we had uh, in Germany a big flood. We all witnessed it which uh, damaged the economy of the country, that would be 30 billion euros. And all over the world, we witnessed uh, many wildfires, including Yakutia and Russia. Even in Turkey, the US, in Brazil, we also had fires on huge territories. We know that uh, the countries of the world in 2015 signed a, here we see the temperature increase mapped by the scientists. Next, uh, we have the, the temperature increase in the Northern hemisphere. We see the Greenland, which is uh, the biggest glacier, which can melt if the temperature rises. And if it rises, the ocean uh, level will increase by 6.4 meters. I said about the Gulf Stream, it can change the all the streams which will lead to uh, climate changes in Europe. Here we see the picture that every year the Arctic is uh, melting more and more. And the area of ice uh, surface is uh, decreasing. Here we see that uh, due to industrial revolution, we had a big bump in uh, CO2 emissions. So what is uh, the reason? I, I was saying that all the countries in 2015 signed, signed a Paris Convention that uh, by 2050, all the countries will uh, uh, come up with a zero CO2 um, track. Uh, 
they adopted a law on uh, lowering the CO2 emission by 50% by 2050. All these estimates, uh, they were coming from the, based on the estimates of uh, 1990. They are planning to adapt the um, CO2 taxes. They will ban the non-electric cars. They will create new taxes for aircraft. And of course, a big attention will be paid to forest restoration. I like to say that the biggest uh, polluters of the environment are top two leaders of the world, China and the USA. Together, they produced they produced more than 50% of emissions in the world. However, the US, when the when the president changed, when uh, uh, the Trump was the head of the country, they left this Paris Convention, meaning that the US didn't want to uh, preserve to stop the uh, climate change. And with Biden, uh, they have changed the policy and uh, he adopted a decree that by 2050, 50% uh, of cars should have electric engines. In 2026, they will adopt new standards on lowering the atmosphere pollution by 10%. And in total, the US budget for uh, climate change they have a good sum of money there. In China, if we count per per person, they have twice uh, lower emissions, but because of a big number of um, population, it's uh, quite big still. The biggest uh, role the biggest pollutant in China is coal, which is 25% of all uh, pollutions and uh, greenhouse emissions. According to the plan, China will be um, will be replacing coal with uh, renewable energy, solar and wind generators. I'd like to say that Chinese people are good inventors. They created the hybrid uh, energy. So when you when you use the accumulators, you use water to accumulate water. And when the solar batteries stop working, they use this water back with the help of hydro station, they get additional energy, meaning they use this uh, energy f on, f on its full capacity. Russia is also a big pollutant. Up to these days, uh, we had no programs on decarbonization. However, lately we have learned that we have already created this program and the budget, uh, we already have a budget to fight the global warming. And there are three main directions in this program that would be monitoring, minimizing the anthropogenic impact and adjusting the human and uh, economic uh, environment to the changes. So the uh, Ministry of Economic uh, Development, they created a strategy paying a special attention to, to, absorb, to absorbing the CO2 with forests and swamps that will lead to the reduction of fires, 
and uh, giving more water to dry swamps. Uh, what are the results uh, that the that they're struggling for eco energy can lead to increased prices on everything. Now we see that the prices on metal uh, on metal are increasing, and from with metal you use the uh, solar panels, car elect electro cars, and of course the hydrogen taxes will also increase. Sorry, the, um, the carbon taxes, I meant. And we can see that the imported uh, products, their prices are also increasing. In Scotland, we will hold a climatic summit where a new agreement on uh, reducing the emissions will be adopted. And the European Union uh, said that this uh, struggle, of course, will not lead to very positive results, unfortunately. What else can lead to such results apart from the average temperature? Uh, they say that due to droughts, uh, we will have uh, famine back. And uh, that's why we need to increase the amount of researchers in this field and to develop a common strategy to to adjust to changing uh, conditions. Of course, uh, uh, providing vegetation is uh, a very important step and we need it to save the planet for this and future, for current and future generations. And for that, we need to unite our uh, struggles and to set back uh, all the political uh, issues. This is a problem that cannot be solved only by one country. In our conditions, of course, for Ikutia, I would like to recommend to create an agriculture complex to develop to develop uh, uh, to develop agriculture husbandry in uh, Tata in Amga in the Luski regions because the climatic conditions they are changing and maybe uh, they already have the uh, they already have the proper condition to grow corn and uh, corny uh, cultures as for industrial uh, as for mining and industrial companies of, they have a negative impact on a natural ecosystem. And I think they need to find some alternative ways to work. And as for the fires, we witness that it's hard to fight them only with shovels. And for that, we need to expand the technical uh, and material uh, base. We need to get more uh, small planes and uh, transport to get to these remote and hard to reach areas. And uh, of course we need to we need to provide them with the scientific lab labs to predict uh, possible fires and possible hazards. Thank you very much. Thank you, Afanasi Prokopievich. Do you have a question? 
Thank you. Uh, one of the topical issues of the Northern Antarctic Territory in the conditions of uh, natural resource exploitation is still restoring the uh, lands from technogenic uh, disruption. And uh, Mironova Svetlana, a head of the Department of Industrial Botanics of the NEFU, Doctor of Biological Sciences Professor, will report on the problem, problem of, of technogenic, technogenic restoration, restoration of lands. Good afternoon. Uh, I would like to present my report on the problems of resurrection of, uh, but it's recultivation of uh, industrial lands. So everybody uh, mentioned here about the damage and uh, nobody actually uh, proposed any uh, suggestions how to uh, restore um, these uh, lands. Uh, so back in 2008s, uh, our teacher um, Conan Kononov uh, gave uh, us uh, the ideas about the about the restoration of the industrial um, uh, lands and uh, and we didn't really think about it and of course we were busy with the with the nature uh, natural uh, fields and stuff and uh, and in 1988 um, we started uh, so the department of uh, nature preservance uh, we started uh, researching the disturbed lands. Why it was in 1988? Because uh, we were allowed to, um, the science was allowed to, to, uh, to go to the uh, industrial lands because they were prohibited for any, uh, any sons to uh, enter them. So in the 1980s, there was a, a decree of the uh, Soviet Union government uh, uh, the northern territories they they are not uh, uh, they, they cannot be restored because of their huge um, amount and uh, and only after uh, um, after we witnessed the dis and, um, disruption of the ecological systems in Tumen, uh only then uh, we uh, the science was allowed to um, speak about the restoration of the technogenic lands. So in 1993, uh, under the auspices of the, uh, is, uh, um, because of the because of the peoples of the Vilinsky region, uh, we created the Institute of the Ecological Problems of the North, and this institute was um, was uh, was uh, called to uh, address the the um, the uh, issues related to the changes that happened in in the Lisky region, and uh, they were connected to the diamond um, production. And that's why um, we should uh, um, we should we had to study how the diamond uh, production uh, influences the ecological systems in um, and um, sixty percent of the territories of Russia they belong to. Uh, to, uh, industries and uh, uh, when we have a diamond production is a big work, and uh, but after the uh, 
we we see uh, tail dumps uh, and, uh, and other uh, land uh, surface changes after they finish and after that uh, and that's why we have the following tasks so what should we do how we can resurrect and restore these lands and how and how to study them uh, for uh, and that's why we have the institutes of the uh, problems of the uh, northern lands and uh, the first steps were done in 1980s and 1990s uh, and we started uh, uh, we started with the method methods of how to study this and uh, the uh, plants are not the only object uh, I mean the plants are the direct uh, directly influenced by the uh, by the industries and um, so they became uh, our object of our studies and uh, while studying, we came uh, up with the technogenic uh, systems. Um, uh, that uh, technogenic systems of the plants on these lands, and um, and uh, the first years uh, we worked under the uh, under the under the leadership of Simon Dmitri, and uh, we worked uh, in the southern part of. Uh, uh, our, our republic and in Aldansky region because uh, the diamond, uh, I mean, the uh, gold diamond uh, uh, has uh, started and uh, there are lands that uh, that haven't been recultivated uh, since then. And if we speak about the uh, about the recultivation of uh, disturbed uh, surface of lands, uh, you probably see, especially in Mirny, uh, the crater of Mir, and we and we started to restore them in 2006. Um, we uh, uh, and we. We, we did the dumping and also we uh, did it uh, with our basically bare hands and uh, this was done in the Mirinsky region. So next we take uh, take the direction on working on the tail dumps and the tail dumps are uh, 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 the places where there are no organic uh, live uh, substances found. And uh, this kind of work was quite uh, big and, uh, and we are working only on the experimental um, sites. And you can see when you put the warmth of your hand on these uh, projects, you come up with beautiful results. Um, so the next one was uh, a, um, so we worked on the uh, on uh, qu query dump of IHAL um, and uh, the, the feature, the peculiarities of this uh, query is done. So there is no whatsoever potential, I mean, um, layer of the soil. Unfortunately, we cannot use, and there is nothing we can use for recultivation. And if you speak about the biological recultivation, uh, if you uh, follow the standards, uh, state standards, you need to have the um, active layer of soil up to 40%, but unfortunately, we didn't have anything of that. And in IHAL, we had the um, aim to to come up with the um, uh, sites uh, for uh, teaching, uh, for uh, studying, and uh, using uh, non-traditional materials so that we come up with um, green sites afterwards. And um, uh, so we were like pioneers. Uh, 
when uh, we would adapt some methods and uh, ways of um, and when we um, uh, uh, so we if using this kind of uh, uh, substances we can actually uh, we're able to um, get bio, uh, bio, uh, green uh, plants so here you see the grow of uh, plant uh, on uh, so different methods were um, were so they uh, use different methods and um, we and we uh, and we also got some uh, active layers of land from uh, other region, which is Usoldanski region. So, what is the main um, thing? Is our experience, and we need to uh, have, we we need to implement our results in other uh, in um, in in at work and uh, due to our general director and um, engineers of this. Um, fabrics and we worked there only for two years and uh, we and uh, uh, according to the methods uh, you need uh, standards you need to work for five years so um, uh, we have today uh, we heard that uh, we need to uh, recultivate uh, the land and we need to plant trees so how to uh, restore such uh, such places like in Mirny, uh, Udachny, and Eichal. So, and these uh, pits are, for, for, uh, are so deep and they're so wide, and uh, it's like it's how to restore these lands. And um, so, probably they will remain as a handmade landscapes. So these are the results um, that we came up with, uh, and we um, made our, uh, we registered the patent. And uh, what should we do? So how to do this recultivation work? Uh, we need to work together with the science and the uh, the industries together. Uh, they say. Uh, so they usually say, um, they say next year we should have this green, this green, and uh, but they but but for um, the rest resurrection, I mean the restoring of these lands, we need years and years, not just one year, and uh, we need to. Uh, We need to cover them with the active layer of soil, and uh, that, and and in Republic we don't have any uh, source, um, and probably we need to have this kind of work. Um, uh, we don't have any nurseries uh, uh, where we could get trees and plants, and uh, probably we should work in this direction further. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Svetlana Ivanovna. Uh, There is a question being asked from the studio, but unfortunately we cannot hear it. Well, uh, I, I, I will, I can just say as a chair botanist and uh, we work only with the uh, active soil uh, 
and we don't really um, work on um, the things you asked. Have you got any other questions? Thank you very much. Um, so we give the floor to uh, Ivan Ushnitsky. Uh, a presentation on uh, preparing the human resources. So the first part of my presentation, I will miss it out so that we have enough time for a discussion. I will talk about uh, problems of preparing human resources to solve the global ecological problems. As the humanity develops, we find more and more connection of processes to the global ecological system, human nature. Uh, Mr. Vernadsky uh, studied the system in context of uh, dominating anthropogenic factor role in the biosphere evolution. Uh, at the current stage of uh, the society development, a big role is played by the technogenesis that influences all the geosystem. And unfortunately, luckily, we have the objective need to build a scientific uh, approach to preparing the human resources. Uh, the administrative uh, division of uh, Russia is characterized by uh, strict borders based on its uh, policy. However, it doesn't uh, it, it's, it doesn't look at the it doesn't look at the ecosystems. Uh, we don't have a unified uh, standards of natural resource management and resource uh, preservation leads to the fact that all the um, each subject uh, decides its uh, ecological and ecological uh, problems on its own based on corporate instruments. This leads to uncontrollable processes of anthropogenic uh, straits on uh, boarding regions in each region in Russia. In this case, we cannot uh, discuss about the inter-regional uh, cooperation, unfortunately, and uh, biochemical, uh, mechanical, acoustical, electromagnetic, radioactive uh, impacts they all uh, produce it. However, the Russian Federation that has a huge territory with uh, very unique uh, ecological landscapes is characterized by the uh, territories that are being uh, neighbors to each other. We can uh, take two examples. Our Republic, the Sahara Republic with a uh, area of more than 3000 square kilometers has borders with uh, several uh, subject to unities of Russia. In the northern part of Krasnoyarsky Krai, the region that is on border with the Sahara Republic had a huge technogenic catastrophe, the oil spill on Norilsky uh, electro station. Uh, and this, uh, this incident happened because of the uh, land uh, subsidies under this station. The spill was uh, 180,000 square meters big. As a result, these uh, technogenic straits migrated uh, that uh, can lead in the future to a really negative result. Another ecologically important region that has global uh, meaning is a uh, Russian Arctic that is uh, 9 million square kilometers. That is 75% of this territory is in the water territory. There are, there are glaciers and permafrost 
and uh, we have a tundra vegetation, Arctic uh, deserts, and it all makes the region very vulnerable to technogenic impact from uh, industrial and social infrastructure. If we lose the permafrost, as if it melts, it will create a very big threat to the fundamental buildings. And uh, the industrial development of the Arctic has a status of a special ecological responsibility and regional, all Russian and global scale. Uh, the catastrophe that happened in Krasnoyarsky Krai uh, makes it very important to understand that we need to predict the such events by finding potentially dangerous objects of agriculture and social infrastructure. We need to uh, count uh, and we need to estimate their ecological safety. This will be very resultive if we create a complex uh, monitoring, regional monitoring uh, head led by uh, Ministry of Ecology of the Sahara Republic, uh, alongside with the leading scientific institutions and uh, those who are interested in uh, soil and uh, resource development, along with the Northeastern Federal University as well. And taking this all into consideration with the support of the head of the university and uh, Gazprom and uh, companies like Saha Akadem Resource on the basis of Institute of uh, Natural Sciences from 2022, we will uh, implement educational programs on engineering, uh, engineering safety of, uh, a envi of the environment. We suggest you to include into the resolution of our panel discussion the need to implement such educational programs while preparing the high qualified specialists in geotechnic monitoring. Thank you very much. Do you have questions to the speaker? Thank you. So we have heard all the presenters and now let's move on to the discussion of these uh, reports. Let me introduce myself. My name is Ekaterina Petrovna. I'm from the Humanitarian Sciences Institute. Uh, from the, I'm from NAFU. I had the first suggestion. I would like to repeat it when, uh, imp when creating the solutions for Arctic development, you need to include the question on financing and cultivating the lands and the ways of its and the ways of minimizing the negative impact. Plus, secondly, you need to create a national program on uh, making the areas green, on restoring the vegetation in the places where we had fires and near the areas of uh, natural resource development. Thank you. Please, uh, more questions? I would like to add to the presentation of uh, Ivan Vasilievich. Uh, this year, our Department of Ecology uh, will be celebrating 30 years anniversary And our department was uh, very successful in preparing the resources in ecology. And uh, uh, we like to go on field trips in any region. And we always find our graduates there who are working there as inspectors. We also have uh, enterprises where our graduates work as ecologists. This is very nice to see. And over this time, we've uh, prepared many ecologists uh, in uh, on ma natural resource uh, management as well. Now, now we have a graduate programs on it. We have uh, more opportunities now, and I'd like you to include into the resolution in a point 
about increasing increasing a federal budget uh, places for students where they can study tuition free every year we um, every year we get only 20 uh, undergraduate students and if there would be more places uh, we could get more uh, students and uh, Yes, I would like our department and our specialists uh, to be uh, invited uh, more often into such uh, events in on ecology. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, this year I had a great opportunity to go to go to such uh, beautiful places as Alaykhovsky region and Alinokhsky region. And I have two suggestions. Uh, we have a very, uh, we have very well program on uh, protected areas and these areas should be, uh, should be expanded with adding Alinok region River to the protected areas. This is one of the biggest area rivers uh, that was included into the Yakutia map. This is a very pure river. This is the only pure and the only preserved uh, r river in its natural condition. And I think uh, this uh, river basin should be uh, protected for the future generations so that if uh, so if there is something developing it should be only tourism uh, there were scientists from the biology institute there in the upper part of the river and they found 320 species of plants that means that uh, we were there in autumn in September only for five days and we only found what more than a hundred species of plant and uh, thus I'd like to uh, I would like you to include this uh, river into the list of uh, protected areas this is my first point the second suggestion would be uh, on Alaykhovsky Rayon as well. Uh, it has a very interesting uh, territory because this is a place where people uh, live in uh, communities. Uh, there, are, um, uh, there are fisheries there and the plants and the botanics there is the botany there is uh, very interesting and rich as well as you mentioned there are warming uh, there is warming uh, happening there and uh, many years ago we used to find uh, some um, uh, some remains there relics and they used to say maybe it was uh, a random that we found them we were we went there this year and we found a lot of that in there and this is an example that our territories are not studied well and in this regard scientific um, the science and the scientific uh, estimates should be taking place more often there uh, to put money into that because we always pay for it, such trips uh, on our from our own budget, which is not uh, very good. And as for uh, botanic character in Alaykhovsky Rayon, we don't have of such. And uh, that's why this uh, territory of Drugino should be uh, added to the National Park of 
Kutalik so that the botanic part of this Drugino could be included into this national Kutalik park. Uh, there are prospects for developing tourism. There is a settlement that is not being used anyhow. And there are people who want to meet these uh, tourists and to do something. And uh, as for ecotourism, I think uh, this region uh, could be very attractive. And all the presentations were indeed very interesting. And it's always, uh, and Alexander Nikolaevich had, of course, one of the best uh, presentations. And uh, this year, uh, our graduate student uh, had his uh, master's thesis uh, defense, and he came to the conclusion that all the fields are indeed degrading very much, that we need to restore the forest. Um, we need to use, we need to use these tools. And the Department of Ecology together with uh, Svetlana Milanko went to went there. They planted uh, several hundreds of trees. There is a, uh, this is a big, just a beginning. We hope it will expand further on uh, all around the Republic. We're promoting this uh, tool. We ask teachers to have their own uh, small um, to have their own forest plantations that could be used. Dear colleagues, uh, thank you for your uh, active participation. I would like to um, touch upon one issue that is related to the population of the uh, Arctic regions. Um, we spoke today about the uh, that uh, the the population there is more than seventy thousand people, and most of them are represented by the indigenous peoples. Um, uh, and in the Russian Federation, uh, we do a lot for traditional uh, man, um, traditional way of living, and uh, I've been going to uh, list only a few uh, laws. So the uh, law of the Republic of Saha about the um, uh, about the indigenous peoples uh, in uh, in 2005, and uh, it was so it was aimed to, to uh, preserve the traditional way of life. And uh, this is about the sustainable develop development of the Arctic. Mm. So the next law is the law of the Republic of Saha, and it is actually the first law in Russia, and, and I think it's uh, even in the uh, in the world. And this is about the expertise of um, ethnological uh, analysis of the um, ethnological ex of of doing ethnological ex uh, analysis uh, of the Arctic regions. And we we have already obtained 200,000, uh, uh, 200 uh, no, licenses to, um, to um, explore uh, the uh, industrial capacity of the Arctic. And um, we would like to, um, and we would like to invite the uh, industries to, um, to be included in this kind of analysis because they, and they don't actually, uh, they don't actually agree to do this kind of work. So if we have the law, if we have a law, uh, um, then they will have to um, follow the law. So if we, um, so, uh, and we have uh, different uh, settlements where you have uh, the, you know, like for example, um, the uh, pipeline that goes from uh, through those lands, the uh, the uh, population actually gets uh, um, compensation. Um, and in 2020, um, the Republic of Sahar obtained the program of development uh, up to 2035. And in this program, we uh, 
pay attention on the um, sustainable development of life of the indigenous peoples and uh, of course their life is uh, um, interconnected with the na nature and uh, environment uh, where they live and here and I would like to um, underline that the Russian Federation actually um, supports uh, and uh, uh, the, the the Russian Federation also uh, supports this um, uh, this program that uh, the, the international uh, program that is supported by 190 countries in the world. Uh, that are the members of the UN and um, so there are several aims uh, including the uh, food uh, food uh, supplement uh, of, uh, of uh, the settlements of in the Arctic region uh, uh, then the other one is to um, ensure the uh, healthy way of life supporting healthy way of life in the Arctic regions as well and uh, we also had a meeting with the Ministry of Businesses and they actually um, work in this direction and in, if you have this uh, um, if you have the suggestion of developing ecological tourism then you can actually address her and she will help uh, you um, and uh, and uh, one of the aims and, uh, and this is like the uh, re restoration of the ecosystems of the of terrestrial ecosystems and uh, and this is uh, actually worldwide uh, um, development and we need to, we would like to call and address you to to support our theme and our discussion and uh, we need to better our technologies uh, and so that we can we could uh, minimize the anthropogenic impact on the uh, ecological systems of the Arctic. And this is our, our um, mutual goal and uh, for the and of our government and of us and of uh, institutes and uh, scientists and uh, what how we can do this. Uh, we need to unite uh, our efforts and this will have good results. Thank you very much. So dear colleagues, uh, can I add something? Uh, so I would like to add uh, about uh, that we, so maybe we should have this kind of session together with the lawmakers and uh, um, so that we could, uh, we could uh, look into the law, uh, laws and stuff. And uh, uh, so, you know, there were a lot of sessions that were, um, and I think that we need to unite this kind of uh, sessions together so that we could uh, have access to the information as well. Um, so dear colleagues, I would like to um, thank all the participants and the speakers of our, of the, our panel discussion for uh, active participation in our, um, in our um, session and uh, for um, during uh, these two hours we have touched upon very important issues and questions and uh, I think that we shouldn't be finishing here uh, but we need to continue our discussions beyond this uh, platform and the northern forum is a traditional um, a traditional thing and uh, the um, I think that uh, please uh, take into account this uh, format and this platform and uh, uh, and I think that uh, it will develop uh, further on. And uh, our decision is to take, um, to get every suggestion into our resolution of our of our session. And I'm going to give this to the organizing committee of the Northern Forum. Um, uh, so good luck. And uh, uh, so let's make a group photo. Yeah. Bonne chance.